Hey everybody, this is Dark Guards, and we're back with a little bit more development on the uh, tank game here. So I went ahead and got a bit more work done here and actually started working on a lot more of the AI behavior. Uh, one of the changes I actually have done though that is not related to the AI that I don't know if I showed off the last one but was talking about, at least I know that much, was the fact that uh, when you actually collide with the entities and push them around, the HP bar was rotating. This is now set up to billboard towards the camera, so it will align with the camera at all times to guarantee that you get a much nicer view of the health bar system and can do other things. So I can sit here and push around this entity. Now part of the uh, other stuff I've been working on is actually getting the AI set up. So part of the AI system we've got is one, we now have a team manager system. So we have a system to track what teams players are on. Now when you think of teams, these are not like football teams, these are kind of more like groups um, and I probably will end up renaming it to that in the future, just call it the group manager. So at the moment we have group A and group B, or team A, group B, however you want to call it. Uh, they're set up with very basic properties, not much in uh, in the way of data at the moment. But they are tracked on the actual tank itself. So the tank does actually set itself to the team ID 1, which is team B. I have it set up to be an ID system, that way I don't have to manually attach the team object to every entity. It will automatically find the team manager in the level and then assign the team to the entity automatically for me which is really really easy i just have to make sure i remember what team ids are what per level although the likelihood is what we'll do is we'll probably pre-build all the teams and then set them up and then we'll just transfer that between levels that way we have no chance of making mistakes um and i'll look into a better system in the future that way to make sure this actually does consistently hold and we don't have to worry about mistakes being made in the level development and everything else of course testing will make sure there is no problems in the final product um uh, but on the target itself as well it also tracks team zero it does the same exact thing with the target though it actually does have several scripts that do run so we got the entity mob the entity mob is just a really basic entity uh script so the tank also extends with the entity as well so if we go to the actual tank it actually has an entity right here entity mob is just slightly different the only difference it really has is that it will track a current target there's no need to really do this in the player's vehicle at the moment although though i may look at doing that in the future so you can do things like guided missiles or whatever so we got a current target we have another script that finds a target. So this one we have a targeting delay, how long we want to wait before retargeting again. The range, and of course the host. It will automatically find the host, which host happens to be itself, and it just uses that to get the position and everything else. So we'll find that in there. On top of that, we do have the turret. The turret has a shoot at script and a weapon script and an aim at script. So weapon script, same as the, the normal weapons you saw on the player's vehicles, will actually uh, fire the weapon or actually it comes with the data that can be called uh, to fire the aim at target will aim at the player it's got a little bit of offset stuff basically the same scripts we were using previously the only difference um, is, is that I went ahead and made a prefab for this which actually let me go ahead and save this part is that we actually have so if you go aim at target aim at target it has nothing in it but getting the target itself and what I previously had was with a mouse aim script I recycled the mouse aim script and actually made it so that way we can actually use it as what it's called aim at so this is can be used for anything now and this will work for aiming at anything it is an abstract class so i will have to uh, actually extend this if i want some special behavior but the aim at target can be used for pretty much anything you can actually use this for just about really simple behavior say for example i wanted an npc to aim at it or a spotlight or whatever that actually can be coded now with the aim at target script which is really nice uh, and of course the mouse script actually extends this as well and the mouse script looks exactly the same as it did previously uh, in that it actually would grab the target position. The only difference is I moved all the code up to the aim at script. So here target, which just grabs the screen position of my mouse cursor and will aim the tank at that. Uh, so pretty simple. And then the shoot at script, which is what I'm currently working on and trying to figure out what's up with it, uh, which we're gonna showcase here is, well, meant to shoot at the player. But what we can do is we can go ahead and look at what we do have. So we now have an entity that can be pushed around of course that will aim at the player really slow aim time i decided to make the aim time slow that way you've got a little bit of reaction time when it does end up shooting and of course it will shoot at the player and of course it still can be killed and everything else so pretty much where we left off except for the exception we now have a little bit of a echo now what we're going to do in this uh, video is we're going to go ahead and fix this because i feel it's a good opportunity to show off what the game we're doing with the game and actually show off uh kind of how to do this and i don't know how the best way to describe it it's a bit late in the day and i'm a little tired so probably not the best time to actually make uh, videos but we have the script that should be in theory firing at the actual player entity 
and resulting, well, should be firing at it. So we know for sure that the play, the entity has a target, so we know it gets down to somewhere around here because we know that it should work. But what I think is this check right here is not working. So this check is supposed to basically go, is the player within enough of an angle of the weapon that I can fire reasonably without like just sporadically firing? Uh, so we just need to make sure this is actually doing what it's supposed to do. So we're going to check the angle, which we're going to just use a debug log for this. And then we're going to check the delta, which what is the difference in angle, and make sure that that's working properly. And then that should, in theory, tell us if we're close or what's up, or what's going wrong with uh, all the information here. So let's go ahead and do that, and we'll just stare at the console. And this should, as soon as it's done compiling, it should actually pop up. So we can see that our angle is 142. And then our delta, all right, let's see. I'm gonna say, yeah, we did this wrong here. Interestingly enough, I think there's something wrong with this right here. So let's do this real quick and we're going to print out our angle z-axis as well and see what's up with it and we'll do like we'll just call this z always good to label your debug information because our our script should be on the turret should, should be telling me on the turn information uh what our angle is and we see up there that it is actually we go to the bottom here it is relaying the correct information so we got 142 the problem is our z-axis is returning a completely different angle but we can see that our z is right there so what in the world happened oh yeah because uh, we need to transfer it, um, from quaternion to because um, this is stored as a quaternion and we want to use angular axis so let's go ahead and open up on the other scripts real quick and grab something i just need to remember what exactly the uh the name of the method is here which we can go open up parts here and grab the AMAP script the name script has it in here somewhere so this to turn it either yeah this is what we need right there that little piece very simple bug can result in a lot of different behavior of how it behaves so we should be able to see when we actually launch this again oh it was going to crash because vector 3 does not contain the definition of a rotation so what we actually need to do is put this here just one of those things we're not paying attention enough when i'm typing then again i don't get an ide to do this with i'm doing this all on notepad the reasoning for that is just simply I don't like Visual Studios and I don't like the uh, mono development environment. I don't like either one of them. So I'm like, you know what, I rather rather than putting up with the software that I just don't like using, let's use Notepad++ because I'll lose all the abilities from it. But at least I won't have to complain and stuff when the formatting acts up and everything. So this looks like it's working better. Looks like what we're gonna have to do. Yeah, this still makes. It doesn't make any sense. Because our angle is negative 142, but then it turns into. I think if we plus that by 360, let's pull a calculator real quick. Negative 142. I will minus it by 360. It should tell me the same. Well, or not. So 142 minus 5, is it 218? Yeah, that's really, really close. So I think what we're going to have to do is do like plus 360. So we have to go if angle is less than 0, angle plus equals 360. So we just got to like wrapper it real quick because what's happening is that this is producing, this is producing a vector. And when we pump that vector into this, this can produce a negative value. Of course, we're minusing by 90 here. This is just because, for some reason, the, when I get an angle back from doing this equation, it's off by 90 degrees because I assume up is my forward direction, where unity, I believe, assumes it's to the right. Yeah, that makes sense, because in the right, and then you're rotating 90 degrees to go up. 
Um, so yeah. I could actually probably fix that by just rotating the whole camera 90 degrees, and then I wouldn't have to worry about all the offset. And then I would have to make sure I initialize all my entities to face right or some bizarrity like that, but I'm not going to worry about it. This works, and we're going to continue with it. Okay, so that should compile. Let me go ahead and hit play, and then hit play again. I think when it compiles, it will actually update the real, real game as well, but I'm just, I like resetting. So see how this behaves now. There we go, we're getting numbers that are a little bit more consistent with what we expect. Now, I believe I just saw it shoot, did I? Its default shoot rate should be like really low. So let's set this to 0 0.1. Unfortunately, that's going to have to reset, uh, which means we might as well hit reset and reset it out here. So this would be 0 0.1. These bullets do not do any damage, so we don't have to worry about it killing the player. There we go. So that works really easily. And we got basically an AI that can shoot now. So this is a, another step forward in the making the game actually go somewhere. And we actually have this. Now we can actually test behavior and actually have it do stuff like that and check how it's working. And then what we can do is test rotation speed. So say I have it currently set to one, let's try three and see how that behaves. And we got a much better response time. But we're still not getting it where it's shooting at me while I'm rotating. We don't really want to increase the speed per se. Uh, what we're going to want to do is increase the allowance for the shooting angle. So we wanted to start shooting a little earlier. Yeah, that's a, still a little bit sluggish. Let's do three, three degrees. That's a little better. You know, let's actually get this up to a pretty high rotation speed and see how it behaves. So yeah, there we go. We got a much more shooting going on. As you can imagine, what people are going to do is they're going to move around a lot to avoid fire. And you want to make sure this thing is actually actively shooting at at, uh, at the player. So go 10. 10 is a pretty high rotation speed. Yeah, look at that. That's basically what I, I can outrun the bullets. This is where I need to increase the, the speed. All the bullets are physics based, by the way, too. So they actually will uh, move with momentum. And it's pretty nice, actually. You get this nice little curve as it tries to chase us with your bullets. So imagine now if that entity was moving and rotating on its own, just like we were rotating and working interchangeably with other AIs. Which on that note, what we can do is I have all the spawners currently turned off. Let's go ahead and turn these back on. I had these turned off because I was trying to test the AIs individually and trying to test one AI versus like 50 was actually a chore. But now we should have more AIs, so we should be able to test a much higher rate of fire. And we can push them around. And they will actually shoot each other too. Um, this is going to probably be changed when I actually do work on it. So we'll probably also do some ray tracing just to prevent them from maybe... Well, if they're not going to be able to hit each other, there's no point. Well, that works pretty well. You can see where the bullets are bouncing off of the other entities and pushing them around. So the AI tries its hardest to rotate. Let's go ahead and actually go find that target here. It set its rotation speed a lot higher again because we, we changed that. So 10 was working pretty good. Uh, about a 3 degree rot allowance was working good. Now let's, uh, let's increase the bullet velocity while we're at it too. Now you get a much different looking kind of fill going here. Remember this being the third day, third or fourth day, I actually don't lost track already of development. This isn't bad. I already get some movement going on here. Now I just gotta get the AIs to pathfind, which it shouldn't be too hard. Unity's got a lot of built-in uh, mechanism for pathfinding, so that shouldn't take long. Even if I don't end up using theirs, it's not hard to pathfind code. Now, of course, I still gotta make the tank itself have proper physics as well, because you can see where I collide with things and I partially go into them. That's because the tank actually does not have its own uh, proper physics system applied to it, where the rest of these entities actually do. Of course we can shoot these guys. So not bad. <laughs> Their bullets are shooting down my bullets. 
collision system working at its finest. Anyways, I'll see you guys later and hopefully get back with some more content.